Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Bowden versus direct drive on an ANET A6. And specifically, we're going to talk about an E3D Titan extruder with an E3D V6 hot end with the pancake motor. That's a lighter setup than the stock setup. So there's basically two methods of extrusions found on desktop 3D printers. There's the direct and then there's the Bowden setup. Now a lot of people are putting Bowden setups on their uh, ANET printers, ANET A8s and ANET A6s and they're very simple to set up, really. Super simple. It's a lot harder to retrofit an E3D Titan extruder on an ANET A6. Not so hard on an A8, but on an A6 it is. And I'll show you the reasons why in a little bit. So in a direct extruder, the filament, this is the E3D V6, which I'm going to get into a little bit. Specifically with this extruder, there's a filament guide that goes right in there. See that? And that that guides the filament. So there's no play. There's no play at all in the filament. As far when this thing starts pushing, it's got a very short distance to go before it hits that hot end. That's the advantage of a direct drive extruder. You're probably never gonna have a problem with filament kinking or not retracting correctly with a direct drive. With a Bowden setup, which I'll get into a little bit of late, later, there's a lot of disadvantages. So I made the decision to install this E3D. This is a clone, by the way. It's not, it's not an original. It's a clone. And I probably should have just bought the original because this ended up costing me as much as the original E3D. Um, by the time I bought the pancake motor, and I bought the E3D V6 end for this because I originally bought this as an aero setup, which is not going to work on the ANET A6, and I'm going to get into that in a minute too. This is a full-size stepper motor. Um, I have a shorter pancake motor coming for this setup. On the ANET A6, the rods run this way, right? They're, they're, they're horizontal. They run this way. And this kind of needs to sit above the rods. The spacing of the rod, this can't fit in between, you know, so it needs to sit above it. And that creates a problem, right? Because there's no room. There's no room to drop this down enough for this to touch the uh, build plate. Here you can see the problem. If I set this at the same height as the other extruder, the heat block basically is in the way of this uh, this carriage mount, that aluminum carriage mount. Even if I printed a new carriage mount, you know, the way this is set up with the horizontal rods, it just ain't gonna fit. It's just, it just ain't gonna fit. And it doesn't even fit between the rods, so I can't drop it down. It's It's just way too compact in here between the motor and here. That's why the um, the V6 hot end is the way to go. So then I had another idea. You know, I kind of like this setup because it was compact and all that, but it's just not gonna work. This is an E3D V6. That mounts right in there. It's a beautiful thing. Now I have enough room for this to hang down below the carriage. Here you can see with this setup, we can drop this down in there. If I put it at the same level, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. It drops down just a little bit more than this. With the compact pancake motor, this is going to be a pretty light assembly. I mean, because these parts here are pretty much 
It's 90% plastic except for the bearings and gears. And then I believe this motor weighs about 30 grams. And I think the pancake motor only weighs about 13 grams. It's not as strong as this, but that's what the three to one reduction ratio is all about, right? To be able to get enough power at this end. The other alternative would be to mount this as a Bowden setup. But to be quite honest with you guys, I don't want a Bowden setup. And there's a couple of reasons. And one is retraction, you know, the accuracy of your retractions, flexible filaments, you know, there's a lot of play in here. There's a lot of flex in here. And so you can imagine trying to push something uh, that's soft, like a flexible filament through this, it's like trying to push a rope through a pipe, right? Imagine the extruder pushing, retracting, pushing, retracting. There's gonna be a lot of pushing and stretching in this, in this tube. That's one of the main reasons why I don't wanna go with a Bowden setup. Sure, it's a little, it's lighter, and, um, but you know, these A-net printers, they're, all, they're not rockets. They're only gonna be able to print so fast. If you can get 100 millimeters per second, print speed and 150 millimeters travel speed, you're doing well, in my opinion. So what I wanna do is get the pancake motor for this, which is on order, and it's on its way from China. It's been, it's been being shipped now for uh, a week and a half. It hasn't even left freaking China yet. So this is the E3D V6. Throw this on here with the pancake motor. Boom, that's nice. Now, this cover, I could machine this cover to work, but I'm probably just gonna print out a cover for this. See, this is designed for the arrow setup and it has this big nub here, which is, um, this is the cooling for the arrow setup. So it doesn't fit in there. I could machine this. I got a complete machine shop here. I could machine this, and but I want to save this because I may end up using this extruder somewhere down the line. So I'm going to save that. I'm probably just going to print out a plastic cover. I'm sure there's an STL somewhere online for just a cover. So I actually found the cover. And um, actually, if you go on the E3D uh, Titan extruder wiki, they have the step file with the complete assembly and uh, I just broke out the, uh, the lid from it. So I got a plastic lid and I printed it out. That's the print right there. I got a little, I got some trimming to do on it. It doesn't quite fit. There's a couple of things. Uh, probably because this is a, uh, a Chinese clone. So there's a couple of things I got to file on it to, to get it to fit. But basically, I mean, they copied this thing. They copied this thing dead nuts. It's, uh, it's going to work though. A couple of little things to file. That's it. It'll work nice. All right, so that's the deal. I'm definitely going with the E3D Titan with the V6 extruder. Um, stay tuned for that. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, when I'm going to do the build. I'm probably going to show some highlights of what I, I had to do to the aluminum carriage to get it to work. As it stands now, I'm probably just going to drill out a bigger hole, design a new mount to mount it. If I have to design something, especially a mount, if I have to 3D print it, I'll include those files in the video description when I make that video, okay? So stay tuned, guys. In the meantime, I'll probably be making a few other videos. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get to this. I'm kind of waiting on that pancake motor so that I don't have to do this 15 times, you know? I just want to do it once and get it done. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, share it with your friends. I appreciate it. I think I'm up to 120 subscribers now. Really cool. Thanks.